Um, you've heard that the most important day of your life is the day you're born. And the second most important day of your life is the day that you find out why you were born. And so when we're younger, we say, what are you going to be? I don't know. You're going to do this, that, I don't know. And then in your older years, you look back and you say, did I, did I uh, complete the job I was given to do on this earth? And it's a wonderful comfort and confidence if you say, I think I did. I think so. And sometimes we have to be called several times. We have different vocations and all that. But I love always hearing God say to you, I have chosen you. You have not chosen me. Otherwise, I can't stand here and, you know, represent Christ and all that and do what I do if it were, I was depending on myself. So anyway, this is a very important moment for all of us to say, here am I, Lord, I come to do your will. That's the first thing. The second calling that each of us has, though, to me, is to be a happy, joyful, fun, loving Christian person. If he's given us the gift of life, and then he has died for us, and then he said, you know, make the most of this life, it's something, and then, you know, I'll take you home in a few, few years, and try to be happy along the way. The wish of all you parents is that your kids are happy. You always say that. And so we've got a father who says, I want you to be happy. And a lot of you are, and a lot of you are some of the time, but most people, you know, we have our ups and downs. I don't mean that I'm constantly happy, but I have reason to be constantly happy and not let myself get down. And so today I chose this topic deliberately, and it's about uh, joy and humor in our liturgy. Years ago, no one ever thought of having a joke in church. And sister made very sure you did not laugh in church and hit you on the head, you know, and all that. You know, it's no laughing matter. You go in there and don't you snicker. And of course, I was that kid that, you know, you're always kind of sneaky and all. You think it's so funny that that kid just fell off the bells or something. And uh, anyway, I'm so glad to be emancipated that I have come to realize that it's not only right to laugh in church, but it is a responsibility. And what built up this choice of a talk for today were several things. Uh, Laurie gave me a book for Christmas, and it was called Between Heaven and Mirth, not Earth, Mirth. And the whole idea is, you know, whatever happened to joy in our faith? Why are we so solemn? You know, why are all the statues like this and so on? Can't we lighten up? So you could call this liturgy light. You know, everything, you know, in our times, lighten up. Because I think the world is so heavy and so in our face that people are just looking for some kind of relief. They are. I know it. They tell me, oh, thank God we could <laughs> smile now and then, you know, or all the time which would be my hope. So the book is doing me a, a lot of good, and it led me to this choice. Um, a subtitle is Renewing Levity in the Community of Believers. Um, I used to just be very hesitant to t make you laugh here, but out in public where I am, why well, I, I, that was what I was known to do, and it, it gets you a long way because people want to lighten up. So I hope you won't find this um, inappropriate. Well, the second reason I chose this today, I get the magazine called The Week. I like it very much. And uh, on Friday, you get a summary of what's going on in the whole world, from uh, politics to people, to life and death and everything. And uh, in there, I read this little blurb, and it said, 58% of Republicans wish they did not have to settle for the present candidates who are now running. And they s uh, concluded that the reason was they are incredibly unfunny. So I'm not being political. I just want the person that God chose to run this country. So anyway, 
uh, do hope they have a sense of humor. Um, on that subject, in my library, I, I just brought two of these. The usual picture that we have of Jesus, and here, and I never want to, you know, obscure his pain for us, his death for us, but there is this one, which is um, somehow a um, copy of the shroud that our Lord was buried in, they think. And so it's a very, very sad mask of death. But then somewhere along the line, in the last 20 years, people began to put out this one, Jesus smiling. And I didn't bring the other one, I couldn't find it, but there's one where he's laughing. Imagine that, laughing. And the first time I saw it, I thought, uh-oh, you know, I don't know if I can get by with this. I really have that psychology. Maybe you don't, I do. And so, but I always wanted to smile and laugh and be fun. And so I thought it was just a little bit risky and I'm gonna do it anyway. I'm gonna to try to bring joy and humor to our lives and especially for this hour. Another thing that made me choose the subject is that yesterday we had a wonderful funeral and his wife Marie uh, Garcia is here today and her grandson Sam I had never seen until yesterday when they were conducting the funeral. And here was this little sharp kid, you know, dressed up with a tie and everything. And the whole time he's standing beside the corpse and all that and down here, the whole time he's going like this, just like that. He spoke volumes to me. He didn't have to say a word. And then I understand that he was named after his grandfather who was such a, a wonderful, winsome, loving, happy man. And so you can imagine the bond that went on between Grandpa Sam and Little Sam and the continuation of the joyful spirit. So I loved that. And then uh, years ago, I used to just lecture on humor sometimes. And so one of the props I used was Beetle Bailey. Uh, he'd been around since World War II. And so some of you don't read the comics, you know, you're way above that, I know. But I read them. I read some of them. And uh, some of them I don't get, I just don't get them. But anyway, Beetle Bailey is my speed, I get him. So he is <laughs> this lazy guy in World War II and he's always in trouble. How they can come up with a story about Beetle Bailey every day, I do not know. That's pure genius. But it's something I can relate to. And at least 20 years ago, this appeared in the Sunday uh, cartoon page. And this is what it said, listen up. Hold it. He's walking along beside the barracks. He gets out some kind of a thick pen. He says, hold it. I have a thought, and I have to get it down before I lose it. And so he starts writing on the side of the barracks. This is what he wrote. Next to love, humor is the best human emotion. People respond positively to a good humored person. A smile brightens the day. Laughter heals the body and the soul. A good joke often explains things far better than a dry text. Humor puts things in perspective and relieves the tensions of a serious situation. Laughing at ourselves is a wonderful way to stay humble and lovable. Camaraderie is strengthened, friendships are confirmed, and relationships are cemented by sharing a laugh. You can imagine that our Lord with the fishermen, apostles, they must have many, many, many laughs. And so the last panel is this. It says, he's writing, we should value a sense of humor and work too. And by then he's up to the window on the side of the building and the general sticks his head out and he says, that's not funny. There's always a killjoy, isn't it? Someone, oh, geez, never laugh. Or the people that bother me, when I tell a good one, they say, oh, that's funny. <laughs> You know, but there's no evidence that it hit them here. <laughs> That's funny. 
And uh, of course, the other, they can't wait to tell a better one. I had a lot of that. I, I have more ammunition now <laughs> than I did when I started all this yesterday. Well, anyway, who are your favorite comedians? Uh, you may not like the one I chose. Uh, many of you never even heard of him, but the one I'm using, which is a little bit raw, and there will be those who say, well, that isn't so appropriate, but I'm using it because it's foolproof. It's Rodney Dangerfield. Remember Rodney? He's always fixing his ties, saying, I don't get no respect around here. I don't get no respect. And so it was wonderful. So I have a few of his quick sayings, unlike the Irish, who go on and on and on and on and on. And, on. and you know, you forget the whole, by the time they get to the punchline, you know, it doesn't matter. You're exhausted. But Rodney is not Irish. Here they go. One time I was kidnapped as a kid, and the kidnappers sent my parents a note that said, we want $5,000 or you'll get your kid back. <laughs> you get the... <laughs> That's the flavor. If you're not into it, I'm sorry. Uh, my father uh, carried around the picture of the kid uh, who came with the wallet. You know, you get that kid in there instead of his own. And I could tell, I could tell that my parents uh, hated me. Uh, my bath toys were a toaster and a radio. <laughs> if any of this were true, it wouldn't be funny. I asked my old man if I could go ice skating on the lake. And he told me, wait till it gets warmer. <laughs> and then, once when I was lost, I asked a policeman to help me find my parents. And I said to him, do you think we'll ever find them? And the policeman said, oh, I don't know, kid. There's so many places they can hide. I, I, I like, I would go on and on, but I, I'm just going to tell one about Luigi. The Italians uh, have that flavor that I, I, I like too. But Luigi was, uh, went to father and he says, you know, I'm celebrating my 50th wedding anniversary. And he said, oh, that's wonderful, Luigi. I'm so happy for you. He said, how did you manage 50 years uh, with your marriage? I hope it was happy. He said, oh, yeah. He said, well, when we were married 25 years, I took my wife back to see her mother in Italy. He says, and what are you going to do on the 50th? He says, I'm going back to get her. <laughs> so, uh, and then I just kept adding more thoughts. Do you, do you read, read the Irish comics? They're called obituary. And I now look at them, you know, and is there anyone on there who isn't smiling? Nearly everybody is smiling. That's the face they want to remember from their beloved dead one. And that's very interesting to me, that in the final analysis, you know, you go out smiling because you had a good life and the best is yet to come. In the words of uh, George, uh, uh, Steve Jobs, wow, wow, wow. When he was going to see the beatific vision. And so the way we remember then is hopefully with joy and laughter. And I do believe that's what our Lord would have. Another time we may get into why the scriptures and religion are usually without humor. But for now, I give you an assignment. When you go home, please, if you want to, you ask your family if you are any fun to live with. End of homily. <laughs>